Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. I'd guess a good 63% of my TikTok feed is cooking content. Cooking videos do numbers on social media, and it's interesting to see how the platform influences the medium, which influences the cooking itself. For instance, Owen Hahn is on the pod today. He makes cooking videos, and he's out with a new cookbook that's all about sandwiches. It's called Stacked. And in this interview with NPR's Scott Simon, He talked about paying super close attention to the texture of his recipes, which is a normal thing for a cook to do. But he says he was, at least partly, inspired by how well the sound of different textures in food does on TikTok. That's after the break. Support for NPR and the following message come from IXL Online. Is your child asking questions on their homework you don't feel equipped to answer? IXL Learning uses advanced algorithms to give the right help to each kid, no matter the age or personality. One subscription gets you everything. One site for all the kids in your home, pre-K to 12th grade. Make an impact on your child's learning. Get IXL now. And NPR listeners can get an exclusive 20% off IXL membership when they sign up today at IXL.com NPR. Oh, and Han has a new book that poses one more urgent question in these critical times. What is a sandwich? Just any old combo of ingredients between a couple slices of bread? And must it always be bread? Or are other building blocks permitted? Owen Hahn's cookbook is stacked, the art of the perfect sandwich. And Owen Hahn, who used to work in hospitals and became a sandwich sensation on TikTok, joins us from NPR West. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. You find the USDA definition of sandwich a bit short-sighted, don't you? I do. So for me, a sandwich, I categorize it as uh, if the ingredients are stackable and in between a carb source. Now, when I say carb source, that could be bread, of course, mm-hmm. but then there's cookies, tortillas, really just any any sort of carbohydrate. And if it can be eaten with your hands, sometimes a fork and knife, then in my literal book, it is a sandwich. Oh. May I ask about your background and your life? Yeah. So I was born in Italy, spent my summers pretty much growing up in my nonna's kitchen. That's where I fell in love with food. Your nonna is an Italian... Yes. Italian term for grandmother. Best chef I know. Very spoiled with just great food, high quality ingredients. And then I grew up in the States in Florida where my dad, who has Chinese heritage, so I'm half Italian, half Chinese, he was the cook of our family. So I would have Italian food in the summers and then growing up throughout the year, blessed with great Chinese food, which in my opinion, two of the best cuisines. And so that just really laid the foundation for me, just absolutely loving food. Help us understand 2020, Mm -hmm. the year we associate with the pandemic. That really changed your life's direction, didn't it? It really did. I was working at a hospital, delivering food to patients, thinking I was going to go on this whole path of dietetics, go back to school. And then all of a sudden, I actually found out my dad passed away from COVID. Very unexpected. And of course, going back to work in that environment was just not something I was really cut out for, nor what I wanted to do. And what he always stressed to me and my siblings was to just really pursue our passion and kind of have the freedom to do whatever it is we want in this world. And at that time as well, my roommate introduced me to the app TikTok. And admittedly, at the time, I thought of it as purely an app for dancing teens. Um, But I started posting these videos. And the first video that actually gained traction was my grandmother's shrimp toast recipe. So my Chinese grandmother, um, my dad actually gave me her cookbook the last time he saw me, and it really resonated with people all around the world. And then what really took off and made me want to do this full time was uh, my sandwich videos. Yeah, we uh, we we made one of your recipes, and I'm not I'm not going to delay because b- I'm a little hungry. <laughs> uh, let let me explain. Our daughter who uh, who works at a deli made one of your recipes right in front of me now, Turkey Crunch. Could you tell us about it? I love the Turkey Crunch. So this is uh, my personal favorite turkey sandwich. I'm big on texture. And so I call it Turkey Crunch because it has a a Parmesan chip implemented in the sandwich as well as- You you call them Fricos. Fricos, yes. Fricos. uh, I struggle saying crisps. So I I just, 
I substitute it with Parmesan chip. But yeah, Frico mm. crisps and um, oh. it's layered with turkey. And I love the combination of Calabrian chili mayo. I'm a big spice fan. And then pesto is just an all-time sauce as well, oh. whether it's pasta or for sandwiches. And then it's got red onion, a little pepperoncini. To me, it's just, it's the ultimate turkey sandwich. Mm. Okay. Um, tell me about the crunch part. I mean, I mean, crunch is really something that is important to you, isn't it? Big time. So um, in my videos, I, I focus on ASMR. Uh, do you know what that stands for? I don't believe so, no. I don't either. It, it's a very, um, basically, it focuses on sounds. So hmm. whether it's sizzling of a steak, melting of cheese, crunchy bread... It's meant to catch people's attention, but also if I just say, think of a warm, fresh baguette being squeezed and hearing the crunch, like you can visualize that just by the sound as well. And so that's something I focus on with my videos, but also in my recipes, I just love different textures when it comes to food, especially when it comes to sandwiches. I think I always opt for the toasted option, but when it comes to this turkey sandwich, the addition of chip, the the mm. Parmesan crisp, that just comes from childhood. I, I feel like adding chips to a sandwich, it, it's just uh, any way to upgrade a sandwich. Well, I, I agree. Um, as a loyal Chicagoan, let me ask a question that I think has destroyed families. Chicago Italian beef, how wet? Oh, I, I go for the double dip. It better be dripping. All right. All right. <laughs> we answered it forthrightly. Um Thank you for putting in a veggie burger. Absolutely got to have a veggie burger recipe. What's crazy about that is um, sometimes it, it just makes me not even crave or want beef or a regular burger. I, I actually will make these and just stock freeze them. And then whenever I'm, I'm craving it, you just kind of pop it in the oven and you got veggie burgers to go. But that took a lot of kind of R&D because... The biggest thing with veggie burgers is getting a good sear on the patty and making sure it doesn't fall apart. You yeah. still want to mimic the texture of beef in, in the sense of uh, kind of like a firm patty. And if you're just doing mixed vegetables, it's kind of hard to um, achieve that. But adding panko in there and then the quinoa. Panko, of course, are crumbs and, exactly. and quinoa. Uh, yeah. Giving it that texture you're looking for where you can get a nice sear on it. And then the avocado crema, I think, oh. is just it makes that sandwich absolutely incredible so i had to throw that in there as well because my mom is a vegetarian <laughs> yeah it looks great and we'll be trying it what do you think um mr han food that's interesting comforting or fun can put into our lives for me comfort food i mean it's everything it can change someone's mood food is really it's powerful and to me nothing screams comforting than a nice sandwich, something you can eat with your hands on the go. You make it as simple or as elevated as possible. And um, I mean, I, I'm just a sucker for a good sandwich. Yeah. Owen Hahn's sandwich cookbook is called Stacked. Thank you so much for being with us. Bon appetit. Appreciate you having me. Thank you. This message comes from NPR sponsor Ford, introducing the Mustang Mach-E Rally. Chief Engineer Donna Dixon shares why the Mustang Mach-E Rally takes EVs further into the performance space. One thing drivers will love about the rally is how capable it is. People need to get in and drive it because it just blows your mind when you get in and drive it. It holds true to having that pony on the front end. Zero to 60 times are going to be extremely fast, 480 horsepower, and a Magna ride suspension that is tuned for off-road. I'm sure they've never thought of taking a Mustang Coupe off-road, right? So to be able to expand that to not just being an, on a pavement track to now, hey, let's go have some fun in the dirt, you know, why not? It just shows you what we can do with our vehicles. To learn more about the all-electric Mustang Mach-E Rally, go to Ford.com.